Hi everyone, I'm Olli and in this new After Effects tutorial we're going to see how to create a very interesting motion graphics effect that you can use in any of your project to impress your clients, your boss, your colleagues or your friends. I'm talking about proximity animators, so elements that react when another object comes close to them. As with all my other tutorials, we're going to set up a base and then use it as a starting point to create more interesting variation of the effect to push it even further. A big thanks to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Okay, to start I'm creating an array of elements, but uh, this technique will work uh, with anything and can be used in a lot of uh, different contexts. I can create a new null object, then a second null object that we can rename controller. On the controller we can add an expression control effect in this case a slider and rename it max distance and then a second slider that we need to rename strength. Now it's very simple, we just select one element and apply to the position this expression. What it says is basically to check the relative position of the null and if that is in the max distance area to move away from it while the strength indicate how much to move. If we apply the expression to every object, we can see how it works. But if we draw a circle, it's even more clear. Our parameter max distance determines the area of influence of the null and the strength control how much the objects inside the area are moved by the null. And if we change the parameters, we see the elements changing accordingly. For example, if we want, we can even put a negative value to attract the elements. Okay, we have set up our base. Now we can move uh, to the next level to improve it and make it even more interesting. But first, if you want to improve and make more interesting any of your design project, then you should check out the video sponsor Motion Array. I really believe that being a good motion designer doesn't mean only being good at motion graphic, but it also means being good at working smart and fast. And for that, the secret trick is having a place where you can easily find high quality assets and tools that you can use in your projects. On Motion Array, there are thousands of assets including motion graphic templates, video footage, photos, music, sound effects, graphics, but now they also have an incredible new tool that allows you to convert your text into a real voiceover in seconds. You can choose from different type of voices suited for different kind of videos. Blast off into another adventure. To help you, you can filter through gender and video category, then you simply select your voice and put in your text. In just few seconds you will get your voiceover and then you can change it again, for example editing the language, the speed or even the emotion, to get different intonations. Motion Array voiceover is fast, easy to use and with that Motion Array is now the perfect place to find every single type of assets and tool that you might need for your next video. So try it out yourself at motionarray.com and start improving your videos and your creative life right now. I made this simple animation of a cute face waking up. Uh, it's made with just a couple of uh, stroke layers animated with uh, a mask on them. And uh, a shape layer for the pupils set uh, with the eyes as a mat. I want to drag my face on my array and change the dimensions slightly as now it's too big. And then I want to apply the same position expression we've seen before, but now I want to offset it so that different elements have a different field of influence. To have that, we just need to go on our controller, duplicate the strength slider and rename it for our secondary object. In my case, I am renaming it with L2 at the end. Then, on our secondary layer, we open the expression and we change the name of the slider it refers to. So, from strength to strength L2. Now, if we edit the value of the second strength slider, we see that the face has a different movement reaction compared to the body. 
and uh, even if it seems nothing much more it's actually an improvement uh, because uh, it creates variation and that uh, secondary animation that is essential to make any scene more real. Okay, now we are playing with time and uh, things start to get really interesting. Let's go on our controller and duplicate or create uh, two new sliders uh, to control the same parameters of uh, maximum distance and strength, but uh, rename by adding time. On our animated element, in my case the face, we have to enable the time remap and then we can apply this expression. The expression says again to calculate the distance between the subject and the null and then in this case to move along its timeline based on the proximity of the null. So with the null out of the max distance value the animation is at its second zero and when the null gets closer the subject moves its time forward to the end of its animation. Oops, sorry, I have to invert my time values and I also noticed a small error in the eyelid of my face, so I need to fix that. Okay, I want to duplicate the faces and set them on the sphere with the matte. So it's a bit of a time lapse. And uh, now we see how our elements animation react to the proximity of the null. Uh, I love this, but I want to make one last change that will make it even more interesting. Inside the face composition I want to copy and then delete uh, the pupils. Then paste it in our main comp and set it on a face as an independent element. Scale it a little bit and as we did before, create a third level of strength influence, so duplicate the slider and call it strength L3. Now apply the same influence position expression and again change the controlling slider reference to L3. The controller I want to change my layer 3 strength with a lower number, let's try with the 60, as I want the pupils to be closer to the null than the rest of the face. Ok, if we move our null closer we see that it works and the eyes follow the null. Now I want to use the white of the eyeballs as a luma matte. So I am duplicating the pupils along the array and set them with each relative face with a luma matte. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think uh, this is the cutest thing I've ever done in my life. To create uh, even more proximity interaction, also with size and effects, a uh, possible parameter we can work with is the angle. For example, when we apply shadow or highlights. So go to layer style and select the inner shadow. For the moment I'm changing the color to red to make more clear what we are doing. Then we can apply to the angle this expression that will keep it aligned toward the null. Of course you can apply to any type of effects that work using an angle parameter. As you can see now our inner shadow will follow the null. So we can style it a little bit by changing the color and the other parameters like distance or choke. But an important adjustment I need to make is to add this expression to the opacity, so that is also animated based on the null proximity. We can copy this layer style and paste it on all the other elements to get a uniform light effect. Another effect that I love is this. Select everything and precompose it. 
and create a new null object. In the precomped composition, select the position of the first null. Now drag the main composition up so that both the timelines are visible. Select the position of the precomped null and parent it to the position of the main composition null. This way, from the main composition, you can still control the null without having a bunch of uh, individual elements to worry about. Now, to create a shadow effect, I want to duplicate my precomp, but oops, first I left inside it the green light layer, so let's bring that in the main comp and parent it to the main null. Okay, on the second precomposed layer, I want to apply a fill effect with a black or a very dark color and then apply a radial fast blur effect to create a dynamic shadow. Let's set it at 90 to have a stronger shadow and then we can parent the center of the shadow effect to our main null position. Okay, I also have to move the light from the pre-comp to the main comp and also these need to be reparented again to the main null. And that's it, this was a quick example of how we can implement also layer styles and effects with these proximity animation techniques. Thanks so much for watching the video, don't forget to check out motionarray.com using the link in the video description. In the video description you can also find the expression we used in the tutorial and the After Effects file, and also some cool motion design resources just for you. Please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video, bye!